How's it going, everyone? GameStorm's been around for about two years now, and I went to look back at all the videos we've made, which is a lot of videos. But I saw that the second video I ever made for this channel was one about a capture card. One of these bad boys. A dazzle. These things used to be state of the art. I got this for like over $100 back in the day from Best Buy. It was amazing to me. Loved it. Was able to record my games. Never seen anything like it. Well, times have changed and we have HD stuff now. Eventually, I'm going to get one that can do HDMI, like an Elgato, or something like that. But for now, I'm stuck with one that can only do 720p. That is, of course, the HD PVR. It does not have HDMI. It has components. On the front, it's got S-Video and Composite. But this thing is my baby. We use this for a lot of our videos we've made. A lot of the introduction videos for video games. Anytime we play a game, I try and use this. It's the best quality I have. Got this for about $160, I believe, a while back, and you know what? I thought, if I'm gonna do a tutorial on this, why not do a tutorial on this? Everyone else has done it, so why not? So, here it goes. So first things first, let's do a little review over this bad boy. This records in 720p HD, 60 frames per second, using the component. It has a toss link cable in and out, which is optical for 5.1 surround sound. Has a remote control for it, USB, and power. On the front, the composite with S-Video, power button, lights up blue around the edges, pretty slick little device. I would say this is good for recording HD video on YouTube because you can't really tell a difference in between 1080p and 720p in my opinion on YouTube. Uh, for streaming with like exploit and stuff, there is quite a delay so I would say it's okay for streaming if you can figure out how many milliseconds to delay your audio and video by for your camera, like webcam, and all that good stuff. But other than that, really, really good. Um, the software for it, the ArcSoft Total Media Extreme, fairly good. So yeah, this is uh, very, very good. I've not used the second one, the HTTP VR2. Don't know if it's better or not, but for what it is, it's good, good enough for me. Uh, I'd like to have an HDMI one eventually, but this will suffice. So I would give this probably, oh, I don't know, eight to nine out of 10. So I guess 8.5 out of 10. So there you go. So now that you know that this is a pretty good capture card, uh, let's get to how to set up this bad boy. All right, one other important thing that I forgot to mention in the review, which this is very, very important. The composite end right here will not record anything below 480p. I do not know why or 480i. Um, so anything below the GameCube, original Xbox, PS2 era, it's not going to work. I don't know why that is. It will not pick up the, the 240p stuff, 360, I don't know why that is. Will not get N64, Super Nintendos, Nintendos, any of that. Genesis eyes. So yeah, that's the only downfall of this. Use a simpler capture card like an easy cap uh, for stuff that you're going to use for old timing. But for HD, this is what you want for now till you get a uh, HDMI. So as you can see on here, it has in and outs. So that means you have you don't have to have any splitters like you did for the Dazzle setup that I showed you. So that's very, very handy. And it even comes with, boom, component cables for you. So what you're gonna do first, pretend that this, this is an actual uh, original Xbox component cable. Pretend this is plugged in to the Xbox case. So pow, plugged it in there. Now. We're gonna take this and put it in the end, obviously, because we want this to be in the video capture source software, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna guess you guys are not dimwits, and I'm not gonna baby you around with this, like most people do on their tutorials. So I'm just gonna plug this in to the end. You see that now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the out with the component cable that they give you. Just like this. And boom. This is plugged into the Xbox, or whatever you're using. This goes into your TV. This is in your TV so you can see what you're doing, so then there's no lag. If you don't have this, you'll have to watch on the computer screen, but there's huge lag. So if you're playing an FPS, something that requires precision, rhythm games, rock band, you will not like that. You will want this so you can see it on your TV just fine. Now that you know how to set it up, 
after you uh, plug it in and put the USB into the computer, you're gonna open up Total Media Extreme, and I'm gonna show you the settings on that so you can get the best quality. All right, so now that we have the setup all ready to go and the HD PVR is ready to capture, hook it up to your computer, and now we're gonna open Total Media Extreme. So go to Programs, ArcSoft, Total Media Extreme, and open that hoe up. Now, I want to show you guys a really, really HD game that I have, just to make sure that, you know, I'm getting really good results so you guys are, you know, wowed by what I what you see here in a second. So, I looked through my games, and, you know, obviously I wanted to pick, you know, Sesame Street, Elmo's, ABC123, Fun Time, because, you know, it's just amazing, but I, for some reason, could not find it. So, I settled for Halo 4, so you're going to have to forgive me for that. But, uh, anyways, we're going to open up and record a video here. So, um... Here it is. Here's what's playing on my uh, PVR right now from my Xbox 360. Now, has some stuff on the side here. I'm going to go through them. Source. This will have different sources depending on what you have running. Um, you can always refresh it to show more. Video input. You've got the composite, the S video, and the IP RPB, which is the component. So you want to click that. RCA back. This is for the audio. Um, it has uh, the RCA ports in the back with the red and white. It also has them in the front, and then it has the optical SPDIF for 5.1, but I'm using back, so obviously that. And then 2 channel, because I'm not using 5.1. Now, we've got these two things, and these are pretty important. Device setting, uh, not so much, but, you know, this can control the brightness and stuff, so hit default. That's usually good. And then video decoder, depending on where you live, um, for US, you know, NTSC, uh, UK is PAL, blah, blah, blah. So, I'm just going to click that. You see our input. Output enabled, good deal. Now, these three things, a lot of people, I don't know why, but they get confused on like which one they should pick. Really, it's just your preference. Um, if you have a PlayStation 3, does, that does not mean you should pick that. And if you have a 360, it does not mean you should pick that. All this does is it saves it into a format. You see where it says save format? If I am going to click M2TS, it will change it to PS3. If I click TS, AVC HD. If I click MP4, it's Xbox 360. So literally these mean nothing. It's really these things. Um, I like MP4 the best because these two are like DVD type stuff and some players can't play these, but most can play MP4s, so why would I not pick that? Now, enable preview on recording. If I hit capture right now and I have this, I can still see what's going on. If I click it and capture, I won't be able to see what's going on. You want to see what's going on in case it messes up or stops. So yeah, I'll always have that. Hardware acceleration. You don't really need this. I thought you needed it at first when I first got it, but I was like, oh man, my hardware needs to be really, really good, so I need to click this so it'll capture it. No, no, it just like basically puts a strain on your hardware more than anything, so I don't even use it. I don't see what the point is. Now, this is the most important format settings. This is where you choose frames, blah, 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 the quality. So yeah, right now you can see the source is 1280 by 720 and 60 frames per second. It does that automatically. It finds out what it is. Now, this is the one that people get confused about the most. You got constant variable bitrate. Uh, variable just means like it can fluctuate between the highest point and lowest point you choose. Constant will make it the same all the time. I always choose that. Now people want to automatically grab this and go all the way to best. Like, oh yeah, I gotta have that. What this will do, it gives you it gives you ginormous file sizes, and it's not really worth it. Um, there's no real difference you can tell it after like eight. So. In my opinion, 8 is the best, and I believe this defaults to 8 on HD. On a composite, I think it does 5. But 8 is DVD quality. That means it's 8 million bytes, 8,000 kilobytes, 8 megabytes. Um, this is, like, perfect. This gives you, like, really good file sizes, excellent quality. I don't know why you would do anything else. The only other thing I've ever done is 6, and that's when I'm doing, like, a Let's Play and I don't want the file to be quite as big because I know I'm going to be playing for like hours and hours and hours and hours. And I don't want, you know, like a 50 gig freaking file. So, you know, but anything that I'm usually going to do, I put on 8. I use this for Sony Vegas rendering. I use this for Dazzle. I use this for this. So 8 is perfect. Always just do that. Okay. Um, now, Luma and Chroma, you can change that. It's basically just the how it, how it looks, really. Uh, Boost analog audio, you can do that if you want. You don't really need to. Disable bling. I think that's just the LEDs on the actual PVR. Not really sure. For two-channel audio sources, you know, you can choose one of these. AC3 is more for, like, 5.1. AC is, like, uh, iTunes type stuff. I really don't think it matters, but, you know, hit apply. Okay. And then you're good to go. Now, you can see the screen's this big. Now, you can always hit that and make it smaller so you're, like, streaming. You know, you want that somewhere else. I can get rid of that now. 
you know, put that over here, have some other stuff over here. If you use it as a game source, you can completely just minimize it. You don't even need it. Um, you can also, if I can remember how to do this, I think it's Alt Space. And that brings up the file menu. There is no file menu. So if you do Alt Space, they'll bring up that and you can do Size. Now you can see it comes up with this arrow. Um, if I were to, if I click right arrow, you can see it goes to the side. Now if I move my mouse, it's going to move the size of the window. So I can move this to however I want. So I'm like, alright, that's good, cool. You know, and then I can always go back to like this, or I can even do full screen. But the problem is, because this thing has lag, uh, you won't be able to play it straight from your, uh, you know, computer desktop, you know, whatever. You won't be able to see it on this screen and be able to play it like <laughs> normal. Uh, there is lag, there's like a two second delay or something like that. So um, you'll have to play it using the TV, that's what the uh, component, extra components they gave you was for. So now that you know what to do, all you have to do is hit capture. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this review tutorial setup of the HDP VR. I'm going to capture a little bit of Halo 4 just so you can see how good the quality is. Uh, if you have any questions, if you can't get it to work for some reason, you need drivers, um, I'll be happy to help. I had to find drivers for myself uh, at one point. Um, usually Windows can find them you know, by itself. Uh, you can always go to device manager and like troubleshoot it, uh, make it try and find drivers for it automatically, you know, stuff like that. But if you need help, just let me know. Um, I will try and find the drivers again. I have them somewhere on my hard drives. I can send them to you, put them in the description, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, hope you've enjoyed this. PVR is a great little tool. Uh, I would recommend getting it if you uh, want something that's fairly cheap and HD. But yeah, I'm going to capture some. And yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Sentinels. I wondered when they'd show up. There. Chief. A console in the back. It's a localized site cartographer. Hmm. Okay. In service of Forerunner Shield World, designate Requiem. Requiem? At least we know where we are now. Let's see if it can tell us what the Covenant are so interested in.